Strap in, my friends. We've got a good story tonight. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglis Guitar Show. So John sent me a message on my Facebook page. We talk quite often, so this isn't necessarily out of the blue. And he asked me, am I missing something? I think this is a smoking deal. So I click on it, I see Alex Lifeson R40 Les Paul Access. 3800, that seems about right for an Access standard. However, then I zoom in on the photo and I go, <laughs> that's quite the exaggerated quilt top. And I guess Alex Lifeson's signature, aren't those worth a little bit more than that? So I go to our next photo. And I can see the Rosewood fretboard. We've got our Gibson logo. Everything's looking okay here as far as being authentic. We get to the back. We've got the interesting medallion, which those had. In case you don't know, these have a built-in piezo system as well as being in access and having everything that those are associated with, such as the access heel carve and the comfort cut. Then I get up here and go, ooh, is that a signature? And then the next photo is, oh, <laughs> signed number one. And I get to the next photo, it looks like he's pulled up where one of these was sold brand new for about six grand. So then I come up here to verify the price tag again, 3,800. The description reads, first come, first sold. Cash or card only, no layaway, no whiny stuff. Lowball offers will be ignored. If it's posted, then it's still for sale. Very aggressive selling technique here, but this is somebody that doesn't want to waste time on non-serious people. Okay. My immediate thinking was, this has to be a fake scam listing. It can't be real. There's a $3,800 tag on it. I see he's got other photos of the pawn shop. He's selling tires and other random things. Didn't necessarily see any other guitars. So I had reason to believe that uh, this might be authentic. So I told him, go get it. And then he blows my mind with, for you? I mean, if you don't want it, sure. Then he tells me he has one. So I'm not sure if that's the signed one or anything else, but I just didn't feel right having him, you know, get this and then sending it on to me. Obviously I'd pay him for it, but I was really trying to push it that he should go get it because for that price, you'd be happy with two. But then I was starting to doubt that they actually would still have it. And he just thought it seemed a little bit odd as well. But if he was happy, I decided to throw it in his court. If you decide to check it out and you really don't want it, let me know. I'll pay everything cost of the guitar, any Tennessee state sales tax, pack and ship costs at UPS. And I told him I'd throw him a thousand bucks to him just for finding it. To which he replied, that's generous. So you might be wondering, why am I offering such cash to go and get this thing? Well, it's because I did a little bit more research onto this particular one, because when I first saw it, I was like, that looks a little bit screen printed and like really, really bold. We come over here to Reverb and we search Custom Shop Alex Life's and Les Paul Access. The one that was being sold was actually a 40th anniversary of one of their albums, and it looks like it came in a signed version and then just a regular one. And imagine my surprise when the most recent sale for one of these is $15,500. But you gotta remember, I was kind of sketched out by that signature, so I was trying to find other versions to see, is that indeed what it looks like? So this was like the rare cream of the crop, it had crazy tops on it as we just saw, it had a COA that looked something like this, apparently they did 50. But when I looked at this signature, I was like, huh, those look very very different. Is this some sort of a counterfeit? Did they erase the serial number off of a different one and refinish it and try to make it look like a number one? Maybe somebody's trying to pull one over on the pawn shop or something. And I looked at a few other examples and they all had this kind of streaky looking white marker. But I figured at this price, it doesn't really matter. However, I found another photo right on Rush's website. And if we zoom in here, it's the exact guitar. You can see how deliberate number one was. It's the first one out of a batch of 50 that he's signing. Of course, he's going to get a little bit sloppy and the ink is going to run out of the marker. So now I'm wondering, what on earth is Alex Lifeson's Les Paul doing in a pawn shop? <laughs> Did he pawn it? No, obviously it was sold and uh, it somehow ended up in the shop. So at this point, I was pretty excited. I really wanted to document this piece on the show. It's probably not something I'd keep in my personal collection, but if I had to put an estimate to what this guitar is worth on the open market, it would have to be between twenty dollars and $30,000. This particular version is very scarce. The last documented sale was $15,000. So add number one, having a photo of him with it, besides them saying that he played all of them, that's what collectors want.
But here's the thing about this pawn shop. They posted it like 30 minutes before they closed for the entire weekend. They were not open Saturday and Sunday. So I had to sit pins and needles all weekend, hoping that he would get there right out open and we, we could close the deal. We can make history happen here. So I messaged him on Monday right when they opened, asked him if he had any luck. And he said he got stuck at work and he'd be about 20 minutes away. And I was watching it all morning, waiting for it to be updated as sold. But so far we were good. But as soon as he started messaging, I checked again and... Sure enough, gone. Then we started to talk about the instrument, and I was shocked how something so expensive could be in a pawn shop. He says it's very common in the Nashville area that people will pawn their guitars and only get the amount of money that they need to get them by. It's just a temporary loan. They don't want to lose out on the guitar. But I guess I'd never even thought about this. You have to pay interest on what they loan you. The guitar is just collateral in case you never come back. If you come back and you want your instrument back, you have to pay the interest. So who's going to want the full 25k loan? if they only need $2,000. This has to be a pretty high profile piece. Somebody out there has to know who had number one Alex Lifeson of this particular very sought after run. This is not a guitar I would normally associate with somebody that would need to pawn to get by. There has to be more to a story here. Apparently while he decided to visit the shop even though it was marked as sold, he jabbed his ribs a little bit saying, yeah, that was a 25K guitar he just sold. <laughs> he got pretty upset. No, 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 I looked it up, it was only that much. That's one of those cases where you you really do need a private help session with somebody that knows their stuff because there's so many different Alex Lifeson models. They probably still made money. So, I mean, at the end of the day, somebody got a screaming deal on this. And it will not surprise me if we see this thing show up on Reaver for about 30K asking. We had just recently documented like the Epiphone version of this guitar. Now that one was a custom. This one's more of a standard, but that would have been a fun little tale to document. But hey, even though we missed out, it's okay. We got a fun story out of it. I could have made the eight hour journey to be there at open, but that's the thing. They were so smart in their advertising, they posted it right as they closed so nobody could just go and get it. They're building hype all weekend. It wouldn't have surprised me if there were like five or six people sitting outside of this pawn shop. So I'm not the type that wants to get into a bar fight with anybody just to buy something out of a pawn shop. Or who knows, maybe a big Rush fan got the deal of a lifetime and this is going to be kept as a family heirloom. Either way, it adds to the unique story of number one from this particular run. So everybody say thank you, John, for taking us on a journey today, because I would have never saw that listing had he not. Now let's move on to story number two. Do you guys remember the School of Rock episode that had this really cool limited edition black Les Paul special with the gold hardware? And people always comment about it. Hey, how do I get that cool black Les Paul special? It was a limited edition for the School of Rock. No, not the movie. It's like a place that you go to learn guitar and bass, music lessons in general. They had actually sponsored that review and demo of a signature guitar for them. If I remember correctly, they made like 300 of them. Occasionally you find them on Reverb, but most people bought them to hold and play. They had sponsored that review and demo to build up hype, get the pre-orders in. But here we are, I believe two years later, they're coming out with a new one. Now, full disclosure, you have to be part of their group to buy one. And these are pre-orders. They won't ship until early next year. But you had to have been there November 15th at noon to even get a spot. You guys are watching this afterwards, but I'm recording it two days ahead of time. So maybe you can check, see if they're still there. Last time they sold out pretty quickly, though. So here is their new limited edition guitar. It is an SG, which is perfect for School of Rock because somebody could mistake this as, hey, the School of Rock SG, Jack Black, we need to buy this as a collectible and not realize that it's not exactly that School of Rock. But I found the specs to be rather interesting. So it looks like regular SG standard. You've got your Gibson Mother of Pearl logo. You've got the School of Rock Batwing logo, but then oddly enough, dot inlays. But then one random lightning bolt. So hey, now we've got like ACDC signature Thunderstruck guitar vibes going on. I mean, to me, it looks about like the exact same inlay. I'm surprised they reused that inlay. So I wonder if they got away with that only because they wanted the lightning bolt at the 12th. So for me, I'm a little bit conflicted. Do I like this or not? It's cool that it's limited to 300. So it is a limited edition release. I think that could entice somebody to want it. But otherwise having dot inlays, especially for their core audience of somebody who's just learning, I think it'd be helpful to have a unique inlay at the 12th fret and then just have dots not distracting you with anything else fancy. So it's perfect for the demographic. I think it's a cool thing they do for them, but it's not just guitars this time. They also have one of the bases. Now this one, they're only doing a limited edition of 100 on. I think that was a good move on their part. Not as many people want the EB3 style base. 
But instead of the Gibson soft case, this one at least comes with the hard shell. And everything else, I mean, seems pretty typical on one of these. Brand new, they're 2000. They've got the crown inlay on the headstock and the trapezoids on the fretboard. This one dials it back a notch again to our dot inlays and gives us the Thunderbolt at the 12th. Very rockin'. Here's where you get a little bit more for your money. They decided to swap out the standard 490 series pickups and give it a 60s burst bucker pickup. So that's kind of similar to what you'd find in some of the Les Paul standards. So they did that for the guitar, but they didn't change any of the body woods. Most of this is marketing materials. And these are also coming with nickel hardware versus chrome. So it's going to have that slightly more vintage appeal to it. And they've also branded it School of Rock, how many they produced on the back plate of them. It's a nice little touch. You're also getting one of the positive grid customized amps, the Spark Mini. I'm sure that's fantastic for somebody just learning. And it's something that's good enough that they can use throughout their journey. And a very nice levy strap. Although I'm interested to see how are they going to fit that amp in the case. <laughs> So that's what this comes with. How much is it? This as a base model without the fancy inlay work is $17.99. So you get the amp, the premium leather strap, the cool inlay, and lesser inlays at the same time for their bundled price to their students of $18.99. Which that Spark Mini is like a $200 amp. And a really good leather strap is usually between what, $80 to $150? And it's got cool ties to their music school. If I was a kid, that would definitely encourage me to want to play more. So I think it's cool that they do this. That's why I wanted to give it a little bit of a shout out, even if only school of rock members can buy it. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed our tale tonight. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.